In this video, we're gonna learn how to draw isomers. And what an isomer is, is basically a different rearrangement of the same formula. And so in some cases, there's only one way to draw something. But when you start getting into uh, even slightly larger molecules, even as, as soon as the, the four, um, or four carbons, when we're talking about hydrocarbons, they start to change and rearrange in how you can actually draw them. And I, I'm gonna kind of go through a couple examples and then uh, you will follow the rest of the worksheet or the lab activity to create uh, your other series of the isomers. So for example, and, and I'm gonna, for some of these I might do the hydrogens, some I'm gonna just eliminate the hydrogens just for sake of you know not making this a long video. And so if I have a two carbon chain, the only possible way I can draw that is one carbon attached to one carbon. There's no other way we can draw this. And so I'm gonna surround this and I'm gonna have hydrogens where each carbon is gonna have three hydrogens so we add up to have our six. Because again, these alkanes are all gonna be saturated. They're all gonna be single bonds. If I have three carbons, the same scenario takes place. Whether I draw them three in a row or if I try to you know, say, oh, well, this one's different. Now I have a branch. That in reality is not a branch. That is one continuous chain of three carbons in a row. A branch, you'd have to actually take your pencil off if you were to trace from one to another. So I can actually take and trace my pencil all the way through here and never lift my pencil up. That's one continuous chain. So those are really the same thing. And so they're not isomers of one another. It's actually the same exact molecule. And so the only way you can have an isomer is if you actually have something different. And again, if you were to draw and trace, the longest parent chain, I'd have to take my pencil off or I'd have to backtrack to get to those other uh, atoms. So for example, if we look at C4, the easiest way to always draw your molecules is to draw your parent first, your basic one. So for example, I would have four carbons in a row. And again, if I had something like this, one, two, three, and then, uh, sorry, if we go with that same concept as we had over here, if I put one off of that again, that does not work because I can take this pencil and I can trace all the way through without releasing and, and backtracking. So this does not work. That's not an extra isomer. However, if I were to have three in a row and then one carbon off the middle, I now have both formulas will have uh, this, or both materials will have the same formula, C4H10. And I'll draw the hydrogens in, in there for this case, just to show you that it does work out. But it's a dramatically different structure. If I wanna get to any of these other ones, okay, this is the main parent, and then I have this branch off here. I could trace across, but then I'd have to backtrack to go down to this one. Or even I could call this one the main parent, and I'd have to backtrack to get over to this one. And so, there's no other ways. I can't draw something with two carbons and then uh, you know branches off. So if I were to say, okay, I have one that's four long, I have one that's three long with one branch. You know, can I do two long with a branch? If I put a branch here and a branch here, in reality, this is the same thing. I can trace all the way through without lifting my pencil. So this is not an isomer. These are the two isomers. Now, just to show you that it does add up to the 10, remember every carbon needs a total of four bonds and if it was a double bond that would count twice if it was a triple bond that would count three times so each of the end carbons already has one bond to an internal carbon so they each need three hydrogens and then my internal ones each already have two one to the left and one to the right so they only need two hydrogens and we look at the total, I have four on the top, four on the bottom, plus two more, that adds up to 10. If we go down here, we wanna make sure that it has the same formula at 10. Anything that's at the end, just like we saw the ends, those are all gonna get three because they only have one bond so far. So this is gonna get three hydrogens. This one's gonna have three hydrogens. And the left one is gonna have three hydrogens. And then this carbon here, the center located carbon, only has three bonds, so it needs one more which is the 10th carbon. So we have three, three, and three, plus one makes 10. So the formula is gonna be the same, but the structure is gonna be different. And when you have different structure, of course, you're gonna have different properties, and it's gonna have different reactions, gonna have different conditions, so on and so forth. As far as C5, notice with C2, we only had one possible way to draw it. With C3, we only had one possible way to draw it. However, we start to basically exponentially grow with our value. So at C4, I actually had two ways to draw it. 
When I go to C5, we want to see how many we can do here. And so with C5, we can do the basic one is the easiest, five in a row. Now remember, I can't bring one down here, just like we showed in these other examples. You cannot have a branch off the end. A branch off the end is really a continuation. So do not put any branches off your end and think you've made something new. So next thing we wanna do is go a little bit smaller. So I could do four, one, two, three, four. The question is, where do I put the fifth one? Again, I cannot put it on the inside, or excuse me, on the outside. The only place I can do is put it on the inside one. So I can put my fifth one right there. So one, two, three, four, five. Now, I got four on the top and then one on the bottom. So the question is, if I were to put it over here on this one, would it be any different? And no, it would not. Because remember, these molecules, I can flip them. And so in reality, if we count, this is the second carbon in in which that branch is on. If I were to put it over here, it would still be on the second carbon in just on the other side. So don't think just because you're putting it on the other side or don't think because you put one on the top that it's uh, different. It's actually the same thing. So I can't do any more with four. The question is, could I do one with three? We go one, two, three, three across. I can put one up at the top and one at the bottom. Notice any way I look, if I were to take and trace the pencil across, if I go back, again, the longest I can get is three across, three down. I could go up, I could go up and you know over and down. The most that I can get is three. And so again, if I were to try to do two, I couldn't do anything with two because it would just be longer branches and then it would become three or four. So with C5H12, we have a total of three hydrocarbons. Uh, or excuse me, three isomers. These are all hydrocarbons, but three isomers. And again, the concept, there's 12 carbons, or excuse me, 12 hydrogens going with the carbons. We said that every end hydrogen has, again, three. Notice I got four end groups here. That would be three, 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 and three. That would be 12 hydrogens. This one does not need any because it already has four bonds. So as we go through, you'll actually see this. So what I need you to do in your lab, just for practice, if you haven't done it already, you need to trace in and fill in and draw your two for the for the carbon isomers of butane, which is a four. You need to draw in your three isomers for pentane, which is C5. And then what you're gonna come up with for C6H14, there are a total of five you need to come up with. And there is for C7H16, there is a total of eight. And there are some hints on the actual activity and worksheet that what you're gonna look for um, as far as how long you're gonna be. So for example, with carbon five or C5, we had one at five with the longest, one at four with a branch, and one with three with two branches. Look for those hints as you're looking to draw and make sure you compare them to the others. And think, if I were to turn my molecule around, would it really be the same thing? Or if I were to take this, not only turn it this way, but also turn it this way, is it the same thing? So this is the same thing as this. So again, we just have to turn it around. If I'm gonna turn this molecule around again, it's the same thing. I know my letters are backwards, but it looks like it's on the second from left to right versus the second one from right to left. So we have to consider the molecules can move. So the first part, make sure you fill in on a separate sheet of paper or depending on how you're filling it in uh, when you're seeing this. And then what you need to do again on a separate sheet of paper is you're gonna find five isomers of hexane, which is C6, and eight uh, isomers of C7. Again, uh, these are called isomers. And an isomer, again, just as a you know big picture idea, different structures when you have the same formula. And when you have a different structure, of course, you have a different function, different properties, so on and so forth.